we know so little about our plants, our native plants. Even, even here in Kansas, which isn't as rich in plant material as, you know, the tropics or the rainforest, but we know so little. And we uh, work with medicinal chemists and we're making discoveries of even new compounds in plants have been looked at a lot, like the milkweeds. There's been a lot of work done on common milkweed. And we published a paper on new compounds of science in milkweeds, including a weak but uh, an anti-cancer compound in milkweeds. <coughs> So there's lots of interesting chemistry in all of our plants. This is Echinacea angustifolia. Purple coneflower was the common name, but now most everybody knows it by Echinacea because it's in their herbal product trade. And if someone, no one tells you to take purple coneflower as a medicine, everybody talks about Echinacea. And this is the species that has been used the most for medicine. It occurs here in the Flint Hills and then all the way west out the Rocky Mountains. It occurs from Texas to Canada. 18 tribes in the Great Plains use this plant. That's more tribes than, than I've been able to find for any other medicinal plant species in the region. And it was a cure-all. Uh, it was used for a whole variety of things. Every, especially was important for snake bite and uh, rabies. Two clinical trials in the last three years, one that came out last year, showed that echinacea is as effective as Tamiflu and does not have the side effects that Tamiflu does. So my advice, if you want to play with echinacea, if you know you're going to have a period of stress in the wintertime, most of our colds and flu are in the wintertime, like periods of stress being you're going to visit relatives, you, I tell students this, you've got tests coming up. For young people, I also tell, if you know you're gonna break up with your boyfriend or girlfriend, all those things you should dose before those events happen, <laughs> right?